So you got Star-Lord and you want to know how to build him. Well look, I'm one of the few people who uh, chose Star-Lord right from the beginning and I loved playing him. Uh, he has basically three ways to build him. Um, and I'll walk you through why that is and how that works. Uh, I think the best way to test this is actually in Dimensional Duel. So we'll show you how my build, why I built him this way, and then we'll show you in Dimensional Duel. I think that Dimensional Duel is kind of the best mode for Star-Lord. I don't think Omega War is where he's meant to shine. Um, his PvE is good, but not great. Uh, I, got, I think there's a better character for every other game mode. And personally, honestly, I think that Star-Lord's game mode is yet to be released. So I, keep that in mind. Um, if you're starting off the game, I would honestly not start as Star-Lord. Uh, if I was doing it again, I do think Storm is the best, easiest one to start from the beginning. Doctor Strange is pretty good, but Storm just does so much damage that she's good in the early, mid, and late game. Um, and I, she's been super easy for me to do as an alt. So if you want to like do somebody else first, because you have a lot of kinship with that character, go ahead and do that. But um, but then make Storm your alt, your first alt, if that's how you're gonna do it too. But anyway, so whenever you're building a character i've talked about this before just think about your omega cards for me i have shock damage and i have uh chill damage technically the shock damage is slightly more 7.3 and 9.4 so uh, i'll do one of each just to show you guys how i build it um and you can set these you can set these uh builds at the bottom and honestly i, I still need to build my burning one all the way I haven't really done that because I haven't been able to build it out and candidly I don't think burning is the best just from a pure I thought that I was really gonna like it just to help me get most wanteds um, but Black Widow just always beats me by such a large margin that doesn't matter Doctor Strange beats me by such a large mar margin that doesn't matter and Storm definitely beats me by such a large margin that it doesn't matter so uh, I think that getting the extra damage is not super helpful and Notably, the increased damage received by 20% for 7 seconds upon reaching max stack count applies to everyone applying that damage. So even though you're the one doing this work and setting this up, everybody's reaping the benefits of it. Now, for raids, um, like team play, spec ops, stuff that you only are doing once per day, <laughs> and the farms are really easy, Star-Lord is a fantastic teammate to have because of stuff like this. Uh, you get that extra damage for everyone. And it just makes it go faster. Um, and I don't know that anyone else does burning as well as he does. Period. Um, there's several characters with shock. Uh, and Storm also has chill. But Star is kind of the one that does burning. So I think that this is yet to really be tapped into. Um, and then I will also point out here. Just be thinking about his, his armor just matches his skill sets really well. Uh, in his costumes. I'm building Midgardia right now. That's what I'm hoping to get, which is Chill Shot. Uh, Sakaar is the flame. So, so it's the last one you get. And I'm not quite to squad level 55, so I haven't quite finished the game yet. Xanderth is Shock, so you can get that one the fastest. The new Stark City, as you guys know, is Ultimate. And the Hydra Empire is his Assistance class skill, which... He only has one, so, uh, and it doesn't even really say assist, uh, it just says class assist, uh, but his battle soundtrack, which this one, my favorite one is the crit rate, and it's only for him, uh, so you could get it boosted up, uh, and you can see here, every time I boost it, it goes up by like 2%, uh, and quick note here too, when you hit level 100, so level 99, you can bring everything to level 11. At level 100, you can bring everything to level 15. It's very expensive, uh, and I think that that's really where you're noticing fifth, well, level 100s really set themselves apart. It's not from, like, you don't get a whole bunch of stat boosts at level 99, but, but my basic attacks now do 119% damage. At level 11 was like 103. So I've gone up by like an additional 16% uh, on my basic, and the same thing is gonna happen for these other ones. So like this elemental cannon, is at 807% damage on freezing. 
Uh, and you'll note that like the shock ones for him don't do quite as much damage. This is 646. It does leave this like ball of energy that keeps doing perpetual damage. So that can be helpful. Uh, but the flame ones are like 12, 1200. So we'll build the flame one uh, as we go. But I just want to show you this is my favorite uh, PvP build for for uh, freeze. Um, oh, wait, this is not it. I was like, what? Um, okay, so I really like gravity bomb. I like elemental blaster with snow tornado. This uh, snow snownado. Icy slide is really nice for dashing in and out. Battle soundtrack is amazing. Elemental Cannon is just massive damage. Um, and you can come into your change skills and you kind of want to set these up in the order you want them to go off. So first, before I do all of these skills, I want Battle Soundtrack to go. My biggest damage with highest guard break is this Chill Shot. It has a long, uh, has like a long um, bunch of frames where it is just warming up like him getting out the blaster the name for that is escaping me it'll come to me at a later point uh and then i like my jet boots after that to just like kind of mess with the enemy uh get in close and move out it kind of wrecks their targeting it also is high guard break uh the gravity bomb is also high guard break it's fantastic for ads but if you get this to work in pvp the opponent literally can't do anything for like three seconds so it's like an additional guard break without needing to be a guard break. Uh, and certain characters like Captain America are worthless airborne, so it's good against them. Although Cap in PvP is actually really strong when he's fully leveled. Uh, and then last is the Snownado. I'm not like super uh, tied to this one. You know, I could do this chill shot, but this is just kind of like AoE and it's only 219, whereas this is 431. Um, problem solver uh is a chill shot and this one's kind of good for like dashing in and out honestly this is probably actually a better choice than this one this one allegedly knocks them back but doesn't work all that well um and notice here that when you do when you get chill to stick it um it will decrease movement speed and dodge rate for seven sec uh for by 30 percent for seven seconds and now that we're talking about this i'm actually going to just change this one because I really like Problem Solver. And then this gets me like every other one I'm getting my movement. The Star-Lord is really good at like doing these debuffs and then moving away. And Chill works really well with this because the opponent's getting slowed. So if you, and he has kind of longer cooldowns. So if you can like get in there, chill them, run away, wait for your cooldowns to get reset. Specifically uh, this crit rate boot, uh, this crit rate boost <laughs> by th like 40 percent you're going to be able to land massive damage and with things like uh chill shot um grenade uh you're doing a bunch of those procs so you have a real a high likelihood of getting several crit hits uh, if you can get this to crit it's kind of game over it does so much damage uh, and it just adds a whole bunch of stacks all at once so I think there still needs to be a lot of work from the devs and from us content creators to give you a good breakdown of like how many stacks each one gives uh, and how the, the percentage chance, like the debuff accuracy and debuff resistance plays into that. But I'll walk you through why I set this up the way I did and how I like to just go in and do uh, my uh, dimensional duels without you know losing a whole lot of sleep over them. Uh, this season I'm not doing so lot well <laughs> last season. I was like 21 and 4 So uh, it was working out pretty well for me though for most of that I was using shock So we're gonna trade to shock and see if that works better for me live on camera as well uh, The biggest thing I actually just set this on auto because I, I, I find that I like to be concerned with my positioning and not with um, Not with getting my skills off and if you have them set up in the order that you like you can auto pretty well and i will have say that like that is one thing a star lord does really well is he autos quite well because he has so much movement so i just get that off as quickly as i can smash in some damage and you're seeing the chill shocks uh proc here then we move around back and forth the grenade forces him up in the air he can't do anything he's totally uh chilled right now so he has slower movement and slower attack rate his guard got broken because i had highest guard and you're watching his armor just get shredded. He gets frozen there. 
So, Star-Lord is really, 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 really good. Better than anyone else, in my opinion, at applying these debuffs. Debuff accuracy matters for him, uh, and the status effects make a big difference. Iron Man is honestly one of the worst uh, dimensional dual characters, just because so much of his attacks are so easy to evade. Like, you can just dance out of his way. See here, all of my skills are on cooldown. I evade his Unibeam. I evade those other ones. I'm at like two-thirds health. Wasn't even a challenge. Um, but you saw there how I have my skills set up in a certain order so that I get that crit rate boost. I do mass damage with a lot of guard damage. Then I throw the grenade in the hopes it sends them airborne. Most of the time it doesn't. Uh, but it will keep doing continuous damage. So if they stay in that pool, they'll keep getting damaged. And then I go and I do uh, that... Um, the jet boost or so the jet boots are before the grenade uh which gets me in and out and then i do problem solver which shoots me back and forth and the opponent can't track you down that works pretty well for me um i'm gonna walk through the shock build which is pretty easy uh i have this already set up uh the shock one felt like even more of a no-brainer for me than that one did um and here Meteor Shower is just a bunch of damage procs. It's not the most damage. We're just going to swap in here. I already have. So what I do for Star-Lord is just come in here and swap them all to the, the option that is uh, that application. So each of these has like, this one starts off with uh, Shock Shot. The one I have right now is Shock. This one would be a Chill Shot. Uh, this one is going to be uh chill shot as well and then the last one is a flame shot so you're seeing here like i get a bunch of options there's only one shock shot option and i do like problem solver so i actually probably gonna uh replace that one we'll get to that in a s we'll just go ahead and do that now um just for since this is all pvp it's not always the meteor shower is really good at taking out ads it's not super great in pvp because the opponent can see where it's all gonna land it's a little bit like dr strange's uh falling glass one so i again i just really like this grenade it doesn't apply any of the debuffs but you saw me sticking the ones that mattered last time and i find that uh shock is actually a little bit easier to stick than chill is uh and then shock reduces their attack by 25 percent so, you know, that's a big boost you're getting over your opponent. Here, this isn't the most damage, um, but the first one and the last one are fire, so this is like really kind of built more towards the fire build. Um, but it is leaving this pool of constant energy damage that's actually quite large that will damage them over time, even though the initial blur burst isn't that much damage. And it does kind of keep applying that shock as well, which is helpful. Uh, and this one dashes in and out and it allegedly stuns the opponent. Um, I don't know what it means by lands, though, because it doesn't always work. Uh, now, there is uh, the last one is a the Chillnado one. This one right now is the Shock Tornado. It's only 391% damage, which I don't love. This one is a little bit less, but at least I'm stunning the opponent and I'm moving in and out. So that's why it's a, a little bit more value to me. Then I'm just going to switch this one with the grenade because I like to get that same movement. So this is kind of the same type of idea with Star-Lord where you're getting that crit buff. You're doing that mass damage right up front uh, with, the, with the guard break. This is the highest guard break of all these abilities, by the way, even though it is low. Uh, low is the highest. So, uh, But, you know, you are getting that guard break. And here with flame shots, it's medium. So we'll walk through flame last. Let's jump in. Uh, and the, you know, part of this, this is obviously like if I was doing this statistically, I would run each of these um, in, in a, without any Omega cards um, in a vacuum, again, a hundred times each, uh, and then classify who it was against, what level they were, how what level their attacks were. So obviously, I can't do that. That's way too much work, uh, and I can't I can't run it double blind anyway. So I would know too much about the data input for me to make good decisions and it's also inferring that the players like slow down and hold still uh so captain marvel really likes to you to get up close and personal this wasn't even we'll just <laughs> somebody got up too high in their ranking a little too quickly um 
yeah, I get this like this comment from people all the time, like I'm tired of getting slept by level 100. Well, yeah, I, I put in the time, man. Go put in the time. Go put in the time and then come back. Uh, and when you're losing to people who uh, are spending a whole bunch of money so that they can get PVP cards, yeah, that's gonna happen too, you know. Um, so it looks like we're pretty even here. They have three and three. Captain America is a little bit tough. Uh, especially as like Star Lord, some of my attacks send me airborne, uh, even though I don't always necessarily want to be. And Cap really likes messing with you, so I really like that to problem solver as well because I can kind of like uh, get back, put distance between me and Cap. And you kind of—it's hard to always time him. He has certain attacks that do uh, a lot of damage. He gets a lot of guard break. Um, here we're just kind of waiting for my skills to come back off cooldown. Um, but he also has like a passive heal ability. Um, we're not getting, the grenades aren't doing their intended effect. Um, we didn't get the stun there. He's getting the bleeds. So even though we did get the thing to stick, that's game over for us, yeah. That was close. So Cap has a really good matchup against Star-Lord because he has so much resistance. Uh, and you do really need those debuffs to stick. So there's the, there's that shock one again uh, against Cap, who again, like, is a pretty good matchup there. Uh, let's jump back over. We'll do our last one, which is fire and walk you through how that works um, And I, honestly, I could show you other game modes, but I think There's no point in showing you This character in game modes where he's not the best character Just being honest like I think over the long the long run of the game You should be caring more about building what the best character is so here like again I just have this build for all of them. I just think this is the most important to get off at the beginning in order to get all that value. Um, if you wanted you could try to get a stun with something else. I don't think it's all that all that uh, worthwhile. This one does like that continuous damage in front of you a little bit like Iron Man. So we're just gonna stick with our same program here. Uh, the flame shot we want. Um, the lightning rider is that one so yeah the flame shot is only the second one which is not the greatest it's 488 damage so we'll keep it in mind uh, no nato we don't love hyper gravity zone is pretty awesome but I'm not convinced about that one for flame and said this is this is good for ads not good for pvp and it's mediocre against ads as with all his other stuff this one is a really cool animation so i think that's best and then our last one that we have set up is this one which isn't all that good so we're going to actually swap this here and then move it to this one cool I don't have any Omega cards that are synergizing here, so I really don't expect much. Uh, but I, I could be surprised. And I will say, Dimensional Duels is the one thing that you actually have a payoff for doing more than your five a lot of times per day. Because as you move up, you get up in the rankings, you get more value uh, at the end of season rewards, and you get, uh, you get a reward every time you rank up. So, you know, that's cool. Think about it. Um... Do what you feel is best. Captain Marvel and Star-Lord, uh, I would say on the whole, I think Star-Lord has a better matchup against Captain Marvel where she has to like come in and do an attack every once in a while. Star-Lord always likes distance. Um, and he also like gets out of her AOE range. So you saw right there, she did her attack and I just moved out of it by doing one of my attacks. So I'm kind of like getting damage on her without needing to do anything. Uh, we got the guard broken, which is a little surprising. Uh, and if you can get the grenade to stick right at the end of guard break, that's how you keep them airborne and they can't even do anything. And you see here, you, you might not be aware of this, but this these yellow bars are guard break. So we're, you're seeing ours stay pretty lofty. Um, again, I just don't think Captain Marvel has a great 
kit for PvP and Dimensional Duel. She's pretty good when you can get her ult off in Omega War. Just because she becomes like untouchable, kind of. We'll jump in and do one more. Uh, but Star-Lord really does have a good matchup there because she is close to him. She doesn't have a lot of like movement stuff where she can dash around, hit him, and then move away. She really kind of has to stay up in his grill. And he can get out of that really easily while still continuing to do damage. So, um, you know, not, not super... Not a super great matchup for her. As it, Iron Man is very similar, even though Iron Man can be a little closer, uh, sorry, can be a little further away to keep doing his damage than Captain Marvel. Positioning is everything for him. Um, like, don't stand right in front of me the whole time. I do hate his stupid iron robots, though. They drive me nuts. So everything's on cooldown here. I have, I'm on, I'm burning. He's burning. So. Not a huge difference there. I do think when they go up like that, you know they're going to come blow up, but they actually don't do that much damage. So, get my crit rate increase, and then he just stands in front of me and gets melted. Yeah, I just. I have gotten smashed by an Iron Man before, but. They clearly uh, invested in PvP cards. Do one last one, because this is fun. Um. But yeah, I just, I just, you know, I'm not even gonna bother telling you how to build Star Lord for PVE content because it just doesn't make that much of a difference. Like, you, you want to be the guy who's applying these debuffs to the boss or the mini boss so that your team can take advantage of them and just build them for the kit that you have available. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, the extra 20% damage is not as good as a 25% attack reduction. Um, just be if you had like a higher base stat of attack than the opponent did then that would make sense But star lord doesn't have the highest attack base stats um, You see here the opponent went for storms uh, Defensive increase trying to get the guard break back, but I think the opponent built a storm without guard break Which seems like a bit of a poor choice and here we got our just as she was coming out of guard break with the grenade That's why I also have it there in the chain because it tends to line up just right for that. Uh, so number four is like my favorite position. And you see how I can just lay down the punish. I don't think Storm is great in Dimensional Duel. Uh, I do think, like I said, I think probably Black Widow's number one. Uh, and here you see, I'm not getting like my rewards for Dimensional Duel, but I am getting my potential reports, getting this anti convergium box, and you keep getting more and more uh, skills. Let's jump in and find one more. Uh, like I said, I think Captain America really has the best lineup because Star-Lord really relies on getting these debuffs placed. And if he can't get those placed, he really runs into problems. Um, yeah, Storm just doesn't have that much resistance. She has her passive uh, defense increase, which is kind of helpful, but not, not nearly as meaningful as a crit rate increase for Star-Lord in a PvP 1v1 context. Um, really good in Omega War, the best in PvE content. Uh, she can do a lot of single target damage. Uh, she also... Yeah, this is just like... I probably should have been doing Dimensional Duel more. I feel like I'm a little bit below where my ranking probably ought to be. Even with this guard break, I'm not even bothering to try to get out of her stuff. Uh, Storm stuff does kind of... You have to stay in it in order for you to take all that damage. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Try just one more, but you see, I get extra points for each consecutive win bonus that I get. Um, at this point, I'm just trying to get this score up a little bit to show you guys that I do know actually how to do Dimensional Duel. Um, yeah, it is what it is. So it's not where I've been focusing right now because I know that I'm building certain cards for it and I'm in the middle of working on Black Widow who I'm planning to use for this game mode. And I will note that we haven't run into any Black Widows not because she's not good, but because she's already leveled up past, past Silver 2. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she, All the Black Widows are, are competing at, at level 100 at least, are competing at the high end. So this is another thing I was going to say. You see this with Storm. So she did get her shocks to stick, but she's not getting her full stacks of, of chill to land, which in my opinion is a bit of a 
uh, bad build for her, you really do want to be making sure to get all of those. Uh, I tried dodging that, but we were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. She's making really good use out of her um, invincibility frames. This person has built it a little bit better than the last person who played a storm. Uh, but we have her where we want her a little bit. Even though it feels rough. We just gotta keep moving with her. Ah, oh, come on. I don't know where she went. Oh, there she is. I don't fully understand why she should run away. I'll also note that like uh, the winner is the person with the higher health when the time runs out. That storm was trying very hard. Um, and she has some good, they had a good defensive setup where she was getting a lot of in, uh, invincibility frames, um, but it just wasn't enough. And I, I just think don't do shock and chill, like pick one or the other, uh, especially as Star-Lord. It's just hard to get the max stack where you're getting that 30% reduction or increased damage off of burn. So. Uh, anyway, think about that. Do that. Work on it. Have some fun. Uh, Dimensional Duel is actually pretty one of my more favorite game modes. Uh, pretty easy to do. If you take a loss, it's not the end of the world. Um, although having stringing together a massive uh, unbeaten streak is pretty awesome too. Uh, helps move you up really quickly. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you have some ideas on Star-Lord builds, let me know. But until next time, good luck on the path. Get out there and keep on gaming. Bye for now.